main standing for the scriptures of today. It's taken from 1 Samuel 17. I've only taken a portion of it, 32 to 51. It's taken from the NIV. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. Meanwhile, the Philistine, with his shield bearer in front of him, kept coming closer to David. He looked handsome. You know, he looked David over and saw that he was little more than a boy, glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. As the Philistine moved closer to attack, Dave, attack him, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sunk into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, with a sword in his hand, and he struck down the Philistine and killed him. David ran and stood over him. He took hold of the Philistine's sword and drew it from the sheath. After he killed him, he cut off his head with the sword. When the Philistines saw their hero was dead, they turned and ran. Father, we just want to thank you for this word. We ask, Lord, that you will give us all a fresh revelation of what you need to speak to our hearts today. And I ask, Lord, that you will anoint my mouth as I speak. Kindly be seated. We come from different, we see different people at different times in our day-to-day -day life. Some people appear powerful, more knowledgeable than us. And when we consider them, we think that, oh, we haven't accomplished much. But if you look in this story today, what qualification do you think is required for us to be victorious? If you look at 1 Corinthians 26 to 27, it clearly explains it. It says, For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God 
has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise and God has chosen the weak things for the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. Imagine you are not sitting here today. You are chosen by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He has loved you and because of that he sent his son to die on the cross for you so that you could spend eternity with him. David was just a shepherd boy anointed by God and a future king. God did not make a mistake when he called him from the fields to have him anointed. And I tell you today, it is no mistake that you are here. It's no mistake that he has called you by name. You should be proud. You know, you should be happy. You should be rejoicing because that God has called you by your name. So we just go through the gist of what we read and from, right from scriptures number four till the end. Description of Goliath and his armor. The Philistines had a champion named Goliath. This man was nine feet tall, had a bronze helmet, 125 pounds of bronze armor, bronze greaves around his leg, bronze javelin on his back. The head of the spear itself was 15 pounds. His shield was so big that he needed a shield bearer to carry it. Description of David given in verses 13 to 15. He was the eighth son of Jesse, the youngest, and he was a shepherd. Keep that in your mind. He was a shepherd. Goliath's challenge to the Israelites in verses 8 to 11 and 16. King Saul and the Israelites were terrified to see this giant. And they were terrified with the words, his challenging words. We see David's response to Goliath's challenge in verses 23 to 27. Jesse, the father, prepared some food for three of his sons who were in the army and for their friends. And David is asked to go and deliver there and ask, inquire how the brothers are doing. So David has reached there and he's talking with his brothers when Goliath steps out and starts shouting his usual insolence and David heard it. When the Israelites saw the man come out, they are in great fear. But David asks, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes the disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And they told him what will be done to the person who kills Goliath. Now, if someone says something against our God, do you say the same things that David said? Who is this uncircumcised person who is defying the armies or who is defying the living God? Or do you just say it's okay and just walk away? If someone says something against your God, if you have a passion for your God, you will never let them say anything against your God. You will rise up and say, no, our God is good. Our God is alive. Our God will do everything for us. If you believe that, you can say it. But the challenge is, do you believe it? Then we see Eliab's reaction in verses 28 to 29. The oldest brother's name is Eliab the second Abinadab, and the third one Shema. They had gone to war. And they and the Israelite army have been hearing Goliath say this for the last 40 days. But instead of getting upset, Eliab, instead of getting upset with Goliath, he is upset with David because David is talking and asking all these questions. He calls him even conceited and tells him, go back to shepherding the sheep. Saul also tries to dissuade David in verses 31 to 33. David ignored his brother and went and stood in front of King Saul. He told Saul, no one should lose heart on account of this Philistine and that he would go and fight him. Saul says, you are only a boy. That 
Goliath has been a fighting man from his youth. Once again, David ignores that. David's response to Saul is found in verses 34 to 37. Instead, what does David do? He explains that he has killed a lion and a bear with his bare hands while tending the sheep. He declared that he would kill this uncircumcised Philistine in the same manner because he has defied the armies of the living God. He said the same God who delivered him from the paw of the lion and the bear will deliver him from Goliath. King Saul says, go, and he says, the Lord be with you. David gets ready in verses 38 to 40. David gives him, a, 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 Saul gives him his tunic and puts on a coat of armor, puts on the bronze helmet, and when he puts that all on, he can't even walk. And then he said, I can't go with these. He takes it off. Then what does he do? He picks up five smooth stones from a nearby stream, takes his shepherd's staff and grabs his sling, goes out to challenge Goliath. David challenges Goliath in verses 41 to 47. Once equipped with his things, he is happy, he is comfortable, he goes out in front of him. There comes Goliath with this shield bearer in front of him. And when he looks at David, he gets annoyed because he's just a young boy. And he curses David by his gods. But he did not know that David was the anointed one of God. Verses 48 to 51, David defeats Goliath. Goliath was furious and charged towards David. David also runs quickly towards him, reaches into his bag, pulls out a stone, launches it on the sling, and whack, knocks the giant square in the head. The stone sank into his forehead. He falls face down. And then David stands over him, pulls out his sword, not his own, but Goliath's, and cuts off his head. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, without a sword in his hand. He struck down the Philistine and killed him. Now, how was David able to do this? Was he a soldier? He wasn't. He was the youngest son of Jesse, who was, and he was a shepherd. So how did he achieve this victory? He had deep faith in God. His zeal was for God. He's, in verse 45, we see, Then David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. I tell you, if you're going through anything today, you just have to stand on the name of the Lord our God. He will give you victory. Do you have faith? You know how, what is faith? You believe, and then when you see circumstances, you don't. You believe, and you don't. You know, the waves of the sea go on that way. So by the time it comes to shore, it's flattened out. And the same way, if your faith keeps going down, by the time is the end, you will not receive a miracle from your God. You've got to make sure your faith is high. If you don't have faith, ask the Lord to increase your faith. That's important to fight the Goliaths in your life. The Bible says in James 4, 6, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. There is King Saul sitting there, who is supposed to be the king, and who should be encouraging the army. But God chooses a shepherd boy. David states in Psalm 16, 8, I have set the Lord always before me. If you have set the Lord always before you, even if you face challenges, you face the Goliath, he is able to help you. Why? Because you're crying out to that God who is the God of the impossible. Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. 
All this will be added unto you. Are you seeking him or are you only seeking his hand? When you're seeking your, his hand, it means you only want that something that you need. You answer me, Lord. Then you say bye-bye till you need another thing in the future. In John 15, 5 says, the Lord says, for without me, not me, without me, you can do nothing. So make sure always when you're going to fight your Goliaths that you have the Lord with you. The Lord supporting you. David already possessed the spirit of God. The spirit of the Lord was on David when he was anointed by Samuel. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, we only settle for a substitute. We will accept numbers more than soul winning. Activity rather than spirituality. Without God's spirit, we all are helpless. Zechariah 4, 6 says, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Amen? Without God on your side, you can do nothing. Christians have become so occupied with the strategy of the Philistine that is fleshly exploits more than the power of God. We are more occupied with the things of life, power, position, money, than the things of the future, the future life with Jesus and eternity. We are more involved in the pleasures of life than with the things of God. Our thoughts are to be more on the fact, seem to be more on the fact that there is a Goliath somewhere out there rather than how to defeat him. It seems we spend a lot of time studying the armor and trying to duplicate it rather than studying the secret of David's sling and the stone. The battle cannot be won by the flesh. We must be filled with the Holy Spirit and trust him only to get the job done. Next, David had past experience. David had many testimonies. He had gone through a lot of difficulties and he know he knows how the Lord took care of him. When you have a problem, you better remember all of the times when you went through that difficulty, how God came alongside you and brought you out of it. When you remember that, you know that your God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he saw you through then, he will see you through now. Amen. David was not fearful of the armor. He was not fearful of that Goliath. He had seized a bigger enemy before, that is the lion and the bear. Jesus faced Satan before. Satan is defeated. At the cross, Jesus has won victory. So you have someone on your side who has been victorious. And if you put him or you get onto his side, you will always be victorious. The word of God. David had confidence with the word of God. He was a shepherd boy, right? He was in the fields all the time, alone with the sheep. And so maybe he had been communing with God at all times. I tell you, when you are alone, when you are driving, when you are at home by yourself, Talk to God. Sing praises to him. He is alive. Psalm 197 says, Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all day. And 98 says, You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. When you're sleeping, it should be coming into your mind. Praises to God. Praises of the Holy One. If that is always on your mind, not only when you come here, I tell you, your life will be different. You will be changed. 
meditate on the word of god always then you should have a big vision psalm 81 10 says i am the lord your god who brought you out of the land of egypt open your mouth wide and i will fill it open your mouth wide and ask what you need he will give it to you don't open your wide mouth wide and think about small things do great things for the lord don't tell him you want so much when he is willing to bless you with so much it is time that we get on with god's program he can make things happen if we want to have mercy drops falling then only ask a little if you want showers of blessing ask the lord to give you whatever you need and he will give it to you do you want mercy drops or are you looking for showers of blessing make it showers of blessing because it will not only bless you it will bless those who are in connection with you then you should have a heart full of faith we find plenty of faithless people in the chapter today saul does not have faith though he is a king david's brothers don't have faith but david has faith from the beginning he knows as soon as he sees that giant he knows that his god is able to take care of that giant you know why we don't approach god sometimes maybe sin in our heart we think oh we have done this so how can god give this to us i tell you quickly repent get back to that god he will give you what you desire only have a clean heart how can we become giant killers i'm speaking to some of us today we know all of us have some sort of goliaths in our life maybe small maybe big we may not want to face our giants we may want to run from them in fear we may want to avoid them thinking it will just go away we need to know that our giants will just not go away we need to get into battle and have them destroyed how can you do that with the help of our god david was a giant killer because he knew his god was able the giants we are facing today regardless of what it is can be destroyed and can be defeated so how four simple steps on how you can kill your giant david's heart had two things only he did not do it for money he did not do it for fame he did not do it for power he did it to glorify god's name he wanted god's name to be glorified and he knew that he was the new anointed king he would be some day and if he could kill the lion and the bear he wanted to make sure that the israelites were safe the people whom god had chosen you need to make sure that when we fight we should make sure that our brethren christian brethren are not affected by it when we see the giants we are faced with in our own life you need to ask yourself these questions why do i want this giant defeated what is the motive for wanting this giant dead is it for an easier life is it for bragging rights is it to appear powerful in the eyes of people is it because i want to feel better or any other reason that you may have only two proper motives when you want your giants defeated one is when at the end of all or it all you want only god's name glorified and second for god's will to be fulfilled in your life are you willing to accept his plans regardless of what is the outcome the primary reason god used david to defeat goliath was because david had the right motives and friends today one of the reasons we do not see our goliaths defeated is because we are praying with wrong motives next embrace the right method when david went out to fight 
He only took those things which were needed for the fight. His staff, his sling, five smooth stones, and the sovereign living God. So when you go for a battle, if you're going without God, stop, pray, ask him for help, ask him for wisdom, ask him the strategy, he will tell you what it is. But when it's all said and done, in Habakkuk it tells us, the just shall live by faith. God did not save us so that we will be defeated by the enemy. God is not interested in our defeat. He is interested in making sure all of us who say we are believers are victorious. Giants are sometimes placed in our lives to help us grow, to help us mature. Have faith at all times. Your God will never leave you nor forsake you. We cannot always believe if we are looking through the flesh eye, fleshly eyes and seeing our Goliath. You should see through the eyes of faith and believe that your God is able to see you through. Think about this. It looked like David would be, you know, lose the battle. Think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Think about Daniel in the lion's den. Think about the disciples in the ship. Think about Jesus on the cross. When you look at it all, we would have thought it's all finished. But I tell you, it's not finished till your God says it's finished. You will always be victorious if you are looking for victory onto Jesus. I want to remind you, we serve a God who specializes in doing the impossible. You believe that? Yes. Amen. If you bring your hopeless case to him and go to fight your battle with his help, I tell you, you will be victorious. Next, attempt great things for God. Expect great things from God and attempt to do great things for him. When he gives you a small job, just do it well, so that when there is a big job, you can do it well with his help. But if you goof it with the small things that he gives you, then he cannot trust you with bigger things. So do the small things well, so that when greater things are put into your hand, you can do it with his help. I'm going to ask you a simple question now. If you see verse 51, let's look at verse 51. David ran and stood over him. He took hold of the Philistines, sword, and drew it from the sheath. After he killed him, he cut off his head with the sword. So, is the giant still there? Is the giant still there? Yes. Okay. Only now, instead of nine feet tall, he is nine feet long. And you will see that your giants, they may be huge above your head. Your God is under its feet. The, the, the giant is under your God's feet. And he can make it under yours as well. So don't worry about the size of the giant. Remember, you serve a God who is the God of the impossible. Amen? Amen. What does this teach us? Look at things spiritually. David was not upset because Goliath was screaming at the Israelites or King Saul. He was upset because he was defying the living God. Do not operate in fear. Fear moves Satan. Faith moves God. Expect haters. His brother hated him. Why? Because he was anointed. Expect haters when you have God's hand upon you. Do not discouragement derail your destiny. His brothers told him, go back. Saul told him, you cannot listen to what God has to tell you. If God says go, just go with the power of his name. Remind yourself about what God has done for you in the past. If he has done something for you, I'm sure he has done something for every one of you. Is there someone here who can say God has not done anything for us today? 
or till this time i tell you god his mercies are new every morning if you are alive today it's because of his goodness many have passed away so remind remind yourself about the good things he has done for you don't allow your past victories to keep you from your future success oh i did so many things before good what has happened today you become a weak christian you need to get into the word of god so that you can get pepped up with god all things are possible be open to new strategies to deal with your enemy first he killed the lion and the bear with bare hand and he used the sling and the stone for the goliath don't think that that strategy will work ask the lord for a new strategy david is not the only person who faces goliath we also in our everyday life notice the philistines are already in juda and they are challenging the israelites but they are all frightened in the same way our church satan stands in front of the church and sir, tries to bring disorder bring strife we just look on ask the lord how we can get rid of this problem it's we need to know who our enemy is ephesians 6:12 says for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities powers against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places so and so is not my enemy satan is my enemy looking for someone to devour so don't be an easy target god has given us all of the weapons we need for warfare we are not helped just by knowing it just by having a bible is no good you need to know what's in that bible you know to we need to know first who is your enemy second you need to know his strategy and third then you should know how to use those weapons of warfare what giant is torturing you today if god gave you a stone and a sling are you ready to fight or are you willing to submit are you willing to submit to goliaths those goliaths that you find to god and wait upon him for his strategy or are you like king saul and the israelites frightened to face your goliaths if you want to be seeing your goliaths lying down you need to remember three things god is greater than any of the goliaths you are facing two if god worked in the past he will work now we don't need new methods to defeat our enemy the enemy there are only three tried and proven weapons to defeat them one is prayer it tells us watch and pray lest you fall into temptation watch and pray the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak word of god if we are daily into the word of god we'll be familiar with it and we will be able to use it when we are faced with temptation and challenges third is faith for indeed the gospel was preached to us all as well as to them but words which they heard did not profit them not being mixed with faith in those who heard it when you have faith in god he will help you why because you are trusting him after all this is done you've done your prayer you are in the word of god you have faith and it still doesn't work let me give you something to think about find out if there is unrepented sin in your life and repent two check the motives three and most important increase the dosage of prayer the dosage of reading the word of god increase your faith it has no side effects it does not have
other side effects. So increase the dosage. God sometimes sends Goliaths in our life to find out if there is a David in us who wants to stand against those Goliaths. Whether you trust him and you stand, are you willing to stand? Take that stand of faith with God on your side. Today, if you're facing those giants, ask the Lord, give it to him. He says not to worry. Worry is of the devil. Cast all your cares upon me, for I care for you. If you believe that, don't hold on to your Goliaths. Just hand it over to him. He knows how to take care of it. He will give you the miracle you need. Amen? Amen. Let's stand up. We'll just say a small prayer. Lord God, we will not allow discouragement to stifle our destiny. We walk by faith and not by sight. We look at life through the lens of the Holy Spirit and we are led by him in all things. We rejoice in our past victories and thank you in advance for future successes. Our heart is open to new techniques. We receive them by faith. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. With you, God, all things are possible. We face each day with supernatural confidence knowing that we serve a God who is in control of all of the Goliaths that we come up against. We thank you for the victory we have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.